So hello and welcome to the webinar, Autonomous Vehicles, New Features and How-To. This webinar was prepared within the Coexist project and will show you the new features powered by Coexist and explain some additional details about how to model autonomous vehicles in VSIM. The webinar is aimed on the features and functionalities accessible directly through the VSIM GUI and does not explain other techniques like using interfaces in detail. At the beginning, I want to mention two types of stochastics in PDV VSIM. The major part is focused on new AB related features available since PDV VSIM 11. After that, I will present the proposed driving parameters for different AB driving logics. The last part uh, is aimed on how to deal with uh, cooperation and communication. I'm joined today by my colleague, Lucas Couch, who is the principal technical product uh, manager for PTV VSIM and actually the very first developer of VSIM. I guess many of you have heard from him also through the VSIM linked uh, in the forum. Lucas will be here to answer any questions you have in the questions window during or at the end of the webinar. Explicit stochastics is a stochastic which can be influenced or changed by the user directly. Whereas the implicit stochastic is that one which is a part of the code but cannot be changed by the user. Typical way for applying the explicit stochastic is using the functions. For ABs, we can assume that they will behave more deterministically in a comparison with the human drivers. To reflect that, we can set appropriate desired acceleration, deceleration, and maximum acceleration, deceleration. You can set the medium values and the minimum and maximum values. Each vehicle in VSIM gets then an individual value from this range. For AVs, we can reduce the speed. Just let me show you how it looks in VSIM. Definition of a function or changing a fun function. So I choose here, for example, maximum acceleration. And here in this windows, you can see the medium, median and the minimum and maximum values. And if you want to reduce the speed, you can just uh, copy the epsilon values and pass them for epsilon min and epsilon max values. So it's, it's very easy. The second typical place to set explicit stochastic in VSIM are the distributions. Most important distributions are desired speed and the time has an impact on headways uh, with Wiedemann 99 model. For example, for the desired speed, we can assume that the speed spread of AVs will be much smaller and they will obey the speed limits what many human drivers do not do as we know. So distributions in VSIM you can find under base data distribution and if you choose desired speed, you can just choose one and uh, duplicate it. For example, if you double click, you will see the intermediate points here and you can just move them to reduce the number of them and you can change uh, the min and max value. So again, it's um, very easy how to achieve that. Let's speak about the new features developed recently 
within the Coexist project. At first, let me explain the role of the driving logic. It is the logic in form of algorithms which decide how the autonomous vehicle will behave. This is an implication on following behavior, lane change behavior, lateral behavior, signal control, and reaction on, on conflicts. For each of these, Wism offers parameters to set. Within Coexist, we work with the concept of four driving logics based on the proposal of Adriano Alessandrini from the University of Florence. Each of them has some typical characteristic or principles. For rail safe, uh, it's the brick wall stop distance which need to be maintained, big gaps, predefined route, no lane change possible, no unprotected signal phase, um, higher lateral distance or uh, physical separation is typically needed and such vehicles uh, are used mostly in, in close environment. Then we have uh, the couches, which uh, also maintain a brick wall stop distance, needs big gaps, I mean in comparison with the human driver. And yeah, the, the simplification of this behavior means couches behavior. Then we have the normal one, where the gaps uh, are similar to human drivers, but with uh, higher safety. And we have all-knowing driving logic, which means also smaller gaps are possible, but still uh, safe behavior. And here we can expect uh, some kind of cooperative behavior. So the communication uh, is a precondition here. The first feature, enforce absolute braking distance. The idea behind is the vehicle can stop safely anytime without a crash, even if the leading vehicle stops instantly, which means turns into a brick wall. You remember in the previous slide, I mentioned the brick wall stop distance concept as a characteristics of two first driving logic types, rail safe and cautious. So for these, you need to use this feature. It has implications for following behavior. So the following distance need to be as big as uh, the brick wall stop uh, distance concept need. Also for lane change behavior, if a vehicle want to uh, change the lane in between two other vehicles, uh, the brick wall stop distance need to be maintained to both of them. And it has also an implication on, on a gap uh, on, on conflict area and on conflict resolution, uh, the gap acceptance at intersection, but only if you use uh, the VSIM object uh, conflict area. Then the real gap is the time to to, to break uh, to full stop one meter in front of the conflict area. Let me show uh, an example I prepared for this feature. I see it right here. This is a very simple network. And I used here just two driving behaviors. For the first two links, I used the default urban uh, driving behavior. And for uh, the third and fourth one, I used changed uh, driving behavior. And the change here is that uh, I activated Enforce absolute braking distance here. When I start uh, the simulation, and I will pause it, then you can see here, uh, these vehicles have a desired speed 50 meters, and the, the difference between the default driving behavior and the changed uh, driving behavior with uh, enforced absolute braking distance 
the difference is not uh, so big, but when you have a look here on these two links where the desired speed is much higher, it's uh, 100 kilometers per hour, then you can see a much larger distances uh, between uh, vehicles uh, during following process. And that's because uh, the absolute braking distance uh, is enforced uh, uh, in this case. So it has uh, an implication on, on the capacity here. On the right side, you can see the number of vehicles passed through um, with, uh, with the same volume uh, for the, uh, set for the in inputs. So this is easy way uh, how to uh, maintain absolute braking distance for a particular driving behavior. Good. The next one, uh, in the driving behavior of VSIM 10 or older, you can find the parameter number of observed vehicles. The number of observed vehicles or number of certain network objects affects how well vehicles in the link can predict other vehicles' movements and react accordingly. This is the description, which is valid for VSIM 10 version, and it says that also uh, some network objects are internally modeled or internally treated as vehicles, like red signal heads or reduced speed arrows. And also there are other network objects which are treated as uh, a preceding vehicle if they have to stop their like stop signs or a public transport stop or parking lots. For the new version, VSIM 11, we have uh, two uh, parameters, and now we distinguish between interaction objects and interaction uh, vehicles. The idea is automated vehicle can see the signals ahead, but only one or two uh, vehicles in front of itself because the sensors cannot see through the leading vehicle. If the number of objects is smaller than the uh, number of vehicles, it's the same behavior as uh, in VSIM 10, but if uh, the number of objects is the uh, same or uh, higher than number of vehicles, then we get a new limited size and interaction behavior in VSIM 11. So we have vehicles and we have objects. Yeah, for conflict arrows behavior, in VSIM 10, a vehicle takes into consideration all conflict arrows up to the nth preceding vehicle for n, for n observed vehicles. In VSIM 11, it means interaction objects up to max look ahead distance if there is no object. And the number of interaction vehicles limits the number of visible vehicles within the minimum look ahead distance. I will illustrate it, this on some simple uh, scenarios, a couple of possible situations. Here we have uh, interaction object for interaction objects and for interaction vehicles. That's the settings for the parameters and minimum look ahead distance is zero. That means that the red vehicle can see uh, for interaction objects and these vehicles, which are uh, in this range, three, because uh, the fourth vehicle here would be the fifth interaction object. So uh, the red one cannot see the this one. Uh, let's say we have just one interaction vehicle and one interaction object, but uh, the minimum look ahead distance is 50. And that means that all objects within this uh, minimum look ahead distance can be seen. But the, uh, the number of interaction vehicles is just one. So this red vehicle can see just this vehicle, but all uh, objects like uh, signals within this main look ahead distance. In this scenario, um, 
interaction objects, number of interaction object is set to three. And then we can say, see just vehicles within this range. In this example, the number of interaction objects is five and the number of interaction vehicles is three. So uh, the red vehicle can see these three vehicles here. So that's the new com uh, concept available since Visim 11. Uh, let me show an example for this. This one, I have a simple network here. And when I start the simulation, I will have a vehicle which will use this parking route here and park here in this parking lot in both uh, networks here. And then I have uh, another vehicle which will use this route and a third vehicle which will use this route. And it's the same in both networks. So when I start the simulation right now, uh, the vehicles are generated. And when I continue with the simulation, I can see the vehicle number one will park here in the parking lot, the same in the network here below. And here I can see in, on the main link, two vehicles are approaching this area. The first vehicle here, number three and here number four, will turn right. So go, go this way. And the second vehicle, vehicle five, should go straight. But look here, there is a standing vehicle. Here uh, in the list of vehicles in the network, I can see the vehicle number five and on vehicle number six, and I can see interaction target type, which is a vehicle in the front, and interaction target number is three. So for vehicle number five, the interaction uh, target number is vehicle number three. And here for this one, for number six, the interaction target is vehicle number four. When I continue to simulate, then I will see a change here in interaction target number. So this number three here and in the list will change. So when I continue, now I see there is number one. That means for my vehicle number five, the interaction target now in this uh, time step is vehicle number one. That means this vehicle knows that there is a standing vehicle and can change the speed accordingly. But here below, I have the same situation, but this vehicle number six is still can still see just vehicle number four. I can see it here in the list that the interaction target number is four. And when I continue slowly, step by step in the simulation, what happens what happens here, number four goes to the right, and this vehicle got the information about this one, so the vehicle number two too late and was not able to decelerate on time. So there is a crash in this situation. In this network here, there is no crash because vehicle number five could see vehicle number one on time and can decelerate properly. So there is no crash. And the only difference in these two networks is uh, one change in the driving uh, behavior. So when I open uh, the list for driving behaviors here, I can see for this one, which is used for this network with the crash, I will open 
uh, this the number of uh, interaction vehicle is set to one and that's that's the difference and this is an extreme example what could happen in in such situation when the vehicle cannot see more than one vehicle in front of this this is just for illustration how it works but it it doesn't mean that it always means that it will crash, uh, it will comes to crash in Visim, but it has influence on, on the results in the simulation. Okay, I'll go back to the presentation. Use implicit stochastic. The idea here is the stochastic imperfection and human driving is replaced by deterministic machines. In the internal behavior model for humans, there are several stochastic values indicating the speed of human behavior, like the risk acceptance, the ability to estimate distance and speed difference, the precision when operating the throttle and braking pedals. Um, for AVs, deterministic values for uh, these parameters can be assumed. If the attribute use implicit stochastic is false, a deterministic average value is used instead of a such stochastically distributed value whenever the distribution cannot be set by uh, the vision user. This uh, option affects uh, desired safety distance, desired acceleration, desired deceleration, and decision points um, when that means when to start braking or accelerating. And for these here, uh, the user may also specify a distribution or a function, but these are not adjusted automatically. Only an implicit stochastic term is suppressed. And I prepared um, an example to, to show that, to demonstrate this. This is very simple network. I have here just two pairs of links. And when I start the, the simulations, then you can see, I will let me just switch a label from safe distance to number to see the number of vehicle. Actually, what I'm showing you the vehicle labels, that's also a new feature since VSIM 11. So now I can see uh, the vehicle numbers as labels. So I generated vehicles here and another vehicles here with a higher desired speed. So when I continue the simulation, they will approach uh, the other vehicles here. I will show also uh, a diagram here, a chart here. And now the, the vehicles are close enough. So they are in a following process. And here in the chart, you can see uh, with the red color, that's the safety distance uh, to, to the vehicle. Uh, for, for the uh, vehicles one, two, three, and four. So these following vehicles. And you can see that uh, vehicle number three and four are autonomous where uh, the implicit stochastic was switched off. Here you can see the driving behavior in the list. And there is the new parameter use implicit stochastic. And I deactivated this for uh, my driving behavior I use for these two links here. And you can see in the chart that the safety distance for vehicle three and four has the same value. So it's 8.211 and 8.211. But uh, for the other vehicles, one and two, uh, the safety distance differs. And uh, to, just to show that, I will switch here from uh, the label, the vehicle label from number to safety distance. 
and I will change the font so you can see it. And here, the implicit stochastic is on, and you can see this number differs from this one. But here, I have two AVs, and this number and this number, this safety distance is the same because the implicit, the use implicit stochastic is off here. When I open the dialog for driving behavior, you can see that this option, use implicit stochastic, is here. And uh, per default is on, but you can switch it off if you assume or if, if you want to simulate um, autonomous vehicles. Also, the inverse absolute braking distance can be found here. I, I mentioned that before, this new feature. And the number of interaction objects and number of interaction vehicles is here. Um, sorry for the German wording here. Uh, it's uh, still a developer version. Uh, Visim 11 will be released at the end of September. But for uh, Coexis partners, um, development version is available already. Okay, I'll go back to the presentation. Increased acceleration. Uh, the idea is AVs, especially if using car-to-car uh, -car communication, can use a tight coupling with small headways. The normal human acceleration behavior cannot use reliable information about the future behavior of the leading vehicle. That means normal vision vehicles or the conventional vehicle tend uh, to fall behind when the leading vehicle is accelerating. In order to allow vehicles to keep a small headway even during an acceleration process, there is a new parameter we call increased acceleration. This value defines a percentage, usually more than 100%, of the normal acceleration to be used when the leading vehicle is accelerating. The vehicle cannot exceed its maximum acceleration, which defines the technical limit, but it can exceed its desired acceleration in this situation. And this new parameter can be found in the list of driving uh, behavior. And I will show that also directly in Visim. So here I have the list of driving behaviors and I could, I can now uh, add uh, increased acceleration parameter into the list so I can see the value here and I can change it if that's appropriate for my model and for my assumptions. Uh, I also can specify this value for each vehicle class separately. So when I switch to vehicle class for loving behavior and I will select here my AV behavior uh, I need to stop the simulation so I can use this plus button. And then I can have uh, several, several vehicle classes. And for each class, I can choose an appropriate value of this parameter. Um, in, uh, in the next days, our developers should implement this also into dialog, but at the moment it's possible just to, to change it, uh, to access it uh, in the list of driving behaviors. Okay, back to the presentation. New features and driving logics. Um, I presented that they are working with four driving logic, file safe, gaseous, normal, all knowing, and these are the new features you can see here. And we're, our recommendation is to use enforce absolute braking distance. That means the brick wall stop concept for the first two of them, for rail safe and gaseous. 
and you can uh, switch it off for normal and uh, all knowing or not activate it for normal and uh, all knowing uh, driving logic. For use implicit stochastic, we recommend to, to switch this for all driving logics uh, when, you, when you work uh, with uh, automated vehicles. And regarding the number of interaction vehicles, um, our base recommendation is to use one for the first three and for all knowing uh, you can use more than one. You could use more than one also for normal OCA or cautious if you assume that there are some advanced sensor or there is a communicate, uh, communication between vehicles that's that's the case where when you can choose a higher number here and increased uh, desired acceleration a recommendation from us this recommendation was uh, is available for all coexist uh, partners and um, later it will be published also The next feature, headway based on leading vehicle class. The idea is um, the headway uh, to follow off uh, vehicle depends on the follow off vehicle uh, type or class. That means if we have uh, CAV following uh, another CAV, the headway can be very small. If there is a CAV following AV, the headway will be probably a little bit bigger, higher. And if uh, there is an uh, automated vehicle following uh, conventional cars, for example, that the headway could be even uh, bigger. The implementation of this feature um, means that you can you can find it uh, in the dialogue of driving behavior for a car following model and is accessible also through a new coupled list for following uh, which is uh, analogical to lateral and there you can uh, set uh, uh, the values the same way uh, as uh, in uh, the dialogue let me show you that directly in Vism. So when I um, open the driving behavior dialog and I will switch to car following model here, then I can set uh, for, for vehicle which is using this driving behavior, this vehicle will keep uh, the headway to these vehicle classes specified, oh, sorry, again, specified here. Uh, you can set uh, the important uh, parameter for Vidman 99 or Vidman uh, 70, 74. For Vidman 99 is uh, the CC0, the standstill distance, and uh, CC1, which is the headway uh, in seconds. And as I mentioned, there is this new uh, coupled uh, list vehicle class following behavior. In the past, or in Wisdom 10, we have just this uh, lateral behavior where you can set the parameters for vehicle classes, but now you can do it also for uh, the following behavior. That's uh, analogic. Good. The next one, consider vehicles in dynamic potential. The idea here is pedestrian find gaps between standing vehicles to cross the road. This is a new feature uh, in the video on the left side. This feature is off. Uh, in the video on the right side, this new feature is on and 
you can see some differences in the behavior. On in the left side, where the feature is off, uh, the pedestrians sometimes are standing in front of the vehicles, and uh, it looks like they don't want what to do. They are just standing there, not so intelligent uh, like on the right side, because on the right side, they can find actively uh, the gaps between standing vehicles, and they can move to uh, to that gap and use it to cross. Uh, the street. So this is usable if you have a use case um, where you have uh, interaction between cars, between vehicles, and between uh, pedestrians, and you want to have uh, very realistic behavior. Uh, let me show you this also uh, in uh, with some example. So this is the example you could see as a as a video. So when I start a simulation, the cars are driving uh, on these two links and Pedestrians are moving from this triangle area to the another triangle area and also uh, the opposite direction. So I will just stop the simulation right now and switch to 2D to, to show what you need to do to achieve that. So this is just a simple link for uh, vehicles, also this one, but this one here, is also a link, but it's a special link or yeah, with a special settings because the number of lanes uh, I set here to 50, so it's, uh, it's a high number of lanes here, but they are, the width of the lanes is just 0 0.60. This is necessary so, necessary so the pedestrians can find the gaps between vehicles, so the width uh, of the lane uh, should be smaller than uh, the gap between the expected gap between standing vehicles. Here you need to activate that it is pedestrian area and the new feature can be set here. Uh, here you can find consider vehicles in dynamic potential. So you need to activate this and there is one uh, parameter you can set. Dynamic potential, for dynamic potential, you need to have uh, routes for pedestrians and these routes. Let me show the dialog for pedestrian route location. Here you need to activate use dynamic potential. So if the pedestrian are using dynamic potential and you activate also uh, the option consider uh, consider vehicles in dynamic potential, then you can have such uh, a more intelligent behavior of uh, pedestrians. This year in the middle is a VISM object we call conflict area, which is used to resolve the conflicts. And you can see the, the many, many lanes with, uh, with a width of uh, 60 uh, centimeters. So when I run a simulation again, a little bit with quick mode, so we can see uh, the state after, let's say, one minute. I'll switch to 3D. This is brand new, uh, but uh, again, available uh, for you already, and uh, you can test it and uh, try also uh, another layouts where the pedestrians are not uh, crossing directly but with uh, with some angle let's say and um, we are we are also considering uh, a, lit, a small improvement for this but uh, about that I would inform later. 
Good, so this was uh, cost of the vehicles and dynamic potential. The next feature we implemented is a small one, uh, the occupancy distribution, empirical one with uh, value zero is possible now, simply to allow empty trips for future autonomous uh, vehicles of level five, for example. We also implemented OpenDrive import, which is a open file format for a logical description of road networks. Um, it was published in 2006, and Visim can import, or the import is restricting Visim to links and connectors. We are not importing all objects. Yeah, the usage of the format, uh, you can use, for example, uh, road scans or navigation data, create an open drive database, and from this one, and these data are used for traffic simulation or for vehicle dynamics and, and so on. And you can find this in Visim on the file, import, and then open drive. Good, the next uh, section, driving behavior parameters. Um, there is a lot of parameters driving param behavior parameters in Visim. And these are CC0 to CC1 and AX, BX, add and multi. These are parameters for the following behavior. You can see two type, two tables here. Uh, the first one on the top is our recommendation how to change these parameters for automated vehicles with a specific driving logic. We are saying here, which direction should the value change. If the value should be smaller or higher in comparison with the default value we provide in Visim. And the table below, uh, it's the same table, but here we propose uh, numerical values uh, for these parameters. And I will not explain all of them, I would like point just on CC2, we reduced it to, to zero uh, to, to reduce to eliminate, to reduce significantly the oscillation during the following behavior. And we also recommend to, uh, to use zero for CC6 uh, uh, parameter. These tables, uh, again, are available for all Kaixis partners. So uh, you can have a look on it and you, you can test it. And uh, uh, for your use case, maybe you will need a little change. It doesn't mean that this is the only possible or this is uh, the, the only right uh, value you can use, but that's a basic recommendation, which is based on um, the empirical data we collected on the test track in Helmond and uh, also on data we got from the car simulations uh, with uh, Vedacom and uh, Prescan software. Um, there is a table for uh, lane change. Again, the same principle. Uh, the first table shows just the direction and the second table shows the same parameters, but uh, also with a recommendation for the values. Uh, I will not explain them in detail. Uh, I will switch uh, to next uh, slide. And on this one, I would like to point just on one uh, uh, parameter and that's a safety distance reduction reduction factor uh, in, in lane changing. So during lane changing, um, the safety distance per default in Visim is reduced to 0 0.6. Um, for A-safe, there is no lane change available for cautious. You should activate and force absolute braking these days, which will take care about the distances, about the right distances. And for normal and all knowing, we propose these values, but it's uh, it's a for discussion, which one is the uh, appropriate well, for your use case. Then we have uh, parameters, behavior parameters for also for signal control. 
again, many of them. Uh, I would like to point just on one. We have again a reduced safety distance factor here, which is um, per default uh, in Visim 0.6, but we recommend it here to use uh, use one. If if you would assume that also the automated vehicle can recognize or has the information that uh, is positious is within uh, this uh, reduce safety start upstream or uh, start or end upstream of the stop line in the, in this range, uh, if if uh, if the vehicle can recognize that or has the information, then you could also use. Uh, another value than one. Good, uh, then the next question is um, how to transfer the, the parameters into your network. Um, PDVVSIM, there is, uh, there is uh, a file, base network available and this contains all recommended values for Cauchy's normal and all-knowing driving logic. And as, as I mentioned already, of course, these can be adduced if needed. And just to transfer uh, all these settings into your model, then you can take directly this base network and work with it, save it under another name and just continue, or you can use the functionality read additionally. Let me show you how to how to do that. Uh, so you can go to to file, read additionally, network, then you need to select the, the base network I mentioned. It opens this window read additionally. Here you can mark none for reading and then just select the, uh, the important, the, the object type which is important uh, for um, automated driving, driving. So we have here maximum acceleration, desired acceleration, uh, maximum and desired deceleration, speed distributions, then we have uh, time distributions, we also can take uh, model distributions, vehicle types and classes are important and of course driving behaviors. So these we need, I think I didn't forget some. So, and now when I open to driving behavior, the list for driving behaviors, I can see here these three new driving behaviors. I, I, I read it from the base network and now they are here and I can work uh, with uh, them. So I could go to the link behavior types and for this one, when, if I want to use this one for a particular link, then I can here in the coupled window for driving behaviors, speci specify, I can specify here for all my vehicle classes, which are available here uh, after the additional uh, reading. And I can specify here an appropriate driving behavior for this particular vehicle class. I mentioned also uh, functions and distributions. So when I open this one, I can see here this car AV and IGV AV. These are the new one I uh, transferred from the base network. And also, for example, desired speed um, you can see here the comparison. This is the default one we have in Visim with a <coughs> higher speed of speeds. And this is the new one, what you could assume for your automated car when you assume that uh, the car wants to drive to exactly 130 or just with a 
with a small, very small uh, spread. So file, read additionally network, then select the, the base network and uh, read all the objects uh, and use it in your network. Okay, cooperation and communication, how to deal with that? Um, there are two important questions at the beginning. Uh, the first one, what is the impact of a communication cooperation? I should answer this, this, this question. And then the second one, the following one, can I replicate expected behavior with uh, standard PDV vSIM or do I need an interface? I also need to answer this question. And if the answer is that I need interface, then these are available. The COM, which allows to read and cite attributes of VSIM objects or to manipulate them. This is usable for uh, vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to infrastructure communication. For example, for platonic or time slot based intersection control. Examples are available within the, the VSIM installation under examples training autonomous vehicles. Then you have uh, interface driver mode DLL which replace internal car following behavior model of VSIM by own algorithm, the following behavior. And optionally, you can also use own algorithm for the lane changing and own algorithm for reaction on signals. Then we have driving simulator DLL interface. You can couple own control algorithm, full behavior with VSIM plus optional integration, you can you can optionally integrate also the vehicle dynamics and sensors. Uh, in that case, uh, we, uh, we can talk about nano simulation and third party software like Prescan CarMaker and others can be coupled with VSIM. And then you can uh, do car simulations. Materials for interfaces, if you need more information, more details, where to find these. Interface description and example files for this, see the installation directory of VSIM under program files, PDV, PDV vision, PDV VSIM, API, and then driver model or driving simulator. And then you can find interface description, but also some additional uh, files to support you. For COM, we have uh, help and examples. See the examples directory under examples training COM. I really recommend to have a look on uh, the example basic comments for instruction and tips in different programming languages. And uh, also uh, the mentioned uh, examples for autonomous vehicles. Thank you very much for your attention.